I've always found that these topics are kind of awkward to talk about. So I'm gonna start with a really vulnerable story. This was 2020, Two, the year before I got here. I was pretty much told in preseason that I wasn't gonna play. I wasn't in the coach's plans and that I was able to go get a trade. That was probably the hardest moment in my career. I went through a period from about March till June where I was very moody. I was training poorly. I, there were days where I would cry driving to training, like playing music and I would like be literally in tears like what am I doing here? Um, so then I finally went on a trip to, our, to my national with Puerto Rico and kind of found my legs again. I had started talking to a sports psychologist and I pretty much started thinking to myself, like this is just, I, I can't go on with this. Cause I, I thought this might be the end of my career. I was turning into a bad dad, I was turning into a bad husband. So eventually I got to a point where I was like, I gotta change. Um, and I started, I was able to mask it enough. Cause you guys know me, like I'm able to just kind of sit there and like <laughs> jokingly get through things and self deprecate enough to be like, oh, he's okay. But I was too afraid because of my personality and kind of the stigma around talking about it to be like, nah, I'm not good. I didn't play very much on the field. I think I played two games that year, but I ended up becoming a lot better of a teammate and a lot better of a father and a lot better of a husband because of some of those tough moments. And I know that it's no secret that you guys have had some incredible seasons this year. It's been awesome to watch. Um, but both of your journeys have kind of been similar because you both got, came into the league at the same point, um, but then you've kind of been different. So I'm going to start here with Mr. Goal Scorer. Sorry, Dev. We, get, we play defense, so we're not going to go first, yeah, obviously. Exactly. Um, so we're going to start with Tanny. Tanny, I know that that wasn't always the case where it's been this easy to put the ball in the back of the net. So give us a little bit of the story because it's not always been roses. Yeah, definitely hasn't, hasn't always been roses. Going into my senior year, nominated for Mac Herman or the preseason Mac Herman. Nice. So things were looking rosy and lovely and everything. And right when that happened was when I dislocated my kneecap. And it was, hey brother, you're not playing your, your senior year. So it was up and then it went straight down and it kind of just stayed down there with the high point from then till now would probably be me getting drafted. That was what kind of broke it up a little bit. But I remember around like September, October was the first time I, I looked at myself and I was like, dude, I haven't been happy since May. And there's not happy and then there's like, okay, like we're getting close to, to, to depressed here. So it got, it got pretty dark, got pretty bad for, for a little while. And the kind of turning point for me was the first time I went to see a psychologist. That conversation was the first time where I was able to be completely vulnerable and kind of carry that and everything I learned from him into Minnesota, which also again started with more injuries. And they kind of just rolled into each other. There was the one hamstring and then the other hamstring and then the other hamstring. So my first year, I always say is a wash on the field. I've always had very high expectations for myself and to not be able to reach those was really hard for me. And again, I realized what helped me in college. So I saw a sports psychologist here. Going to her was a turning point for me. And I think I always say perspective is everything in life. And I decided after that point to change my perspective on things. And it's definitely still something that I'm working with or working on till this day, having strong people around me, like my parents, my family, my best friends. Um, I had the tools in place to kind of say, hey, listen, we know how it is when you get to a really dark place. We're not gonna go there again. We're gonna try and stay in the light. We're gonna try and keep our heads above water. And we're just gonna try and you know, attack the day and see what it gives us. And I was lucky enough with that mindset, I did well in, in San Antonio. And even now where things are, are good, I still remember those times because the one thing I say to myself is that regardless of how good or how bad things, I always want to stay the exact same. You always want to be even keel, regardless of how good or bad things are. That's great, man. Well, thanks a lot for sharing that. I know we've gotten a little bit more of your, your story of recent. Uh, you've been a little bit in the media and again, but it's from my perspective as the old fart within the group, it's been awesome to kind of see you stay level headed. And it's also been something that you've, you've actively done, which is great. So now on to my, my protege here, Debbie P. I know that you played a bunch of games for the second team. Can you detail what it's like training, being something, someone that trains with the first team pretty much every day, but then still has to, you know, take your, take your licks a little bit as a younger player and go play with the second team and fight and scrap to try to get as many minutes with the first team? Because we've seen it pay off now, which is awesome, but it's not always the case and it's never, never easy. But to see you kind of make those strides has been awesome to see this year. Yeah, no, I appreciate all the kind words. You've been awesome for me. Um, but anyways, yeah, I think back to what you say, like my first year, it was really hard because, you know, this big moment of like signing and being a first team player and then the second team comes about and then all of a sudden, like you're with first team for the preseason, you're training with them and then it's all right, 
see you. You know, you go down. You got to go down with them, and you know, really earn you know trust and respect between us and everything. And it was it was hard, man. I mean, I think there was a time where like even Tanny, like there was like months on end where we were just straight with the second team, and it didn't even feel like we were first team players. And it kind of was like we kind of got to look ourselves in the mirror and you know realize what's going on here and how can we make the most of this opportunity. And like with Tanny, like I remember summertime, it was so bad because I just felt like man, maybe I really am not like for this level because sometimes it'd be like, yeah, I'm playing really good. And then like, you're still not training with the first team. You're still at the second team. Yeah, it's tough. And I think I just got really, you know, hard on myself that whole first year of wanting so much right away and not, you know, like trying to change my perspective of just being like, hey, like you made it to one of the hardest things, you know, a lot of people want to do. And I think you just have to remember what got you here and just keep putting your head down and keep working because I think the day-to-day -day of being with the second team actually allowed me to get more confidence as a person even, like just like expressing my personality more as a player, whereas with the first team I felt like I kind of kept that, you know, enclosed at times because I was just so anxious and, you know, worried if like, oh, I messed this up, if I messed that up, instead of just actually a coach that used to say that to me was Sean McCauley. He always told me whenever you play freely, you're one of the best players out here. So I think he was another big help during those rough times of like, you know, maybe you're not playing right now, but if you just keep staying with the program and, you know, staying with this, you know, good things can come. What are one or two tools that you've picked up along the way that have helped? One of the first ones that, that I started doing was affirmation. So I remember my first four or five months, I used to have the worst anxiety driving into training just because it just, I wasn't comfortable at all. So I chose Romans 8.28. So I just always say to myself, all things work together for good for those who love God. And it would kind of give me a sense of peace. The other one, which I would say is beneficial for everyone, is just communication. I think the biggest struggle for men is just, most of the time, it's just not talking. Mm -hmm. We keep it in, we don't talk about it, we kind of sweep it under the rug and hope it goes away eventually. And the one thing that really helped me is finding my people and just being able to be very honest with them and being like, hey, I'm not, I'm not okay right now. Mm -hmm. And having those tough conversations with them. I think a big thing that helped me when I was like really, really down was just finding time for myself to meditate and really just find calmness in my mind because I would notice my mind would just get so overwhelmed and thinking like, oh, you're not doing this, you're not doing that. And then just take 10 minutes in a dark room somewhere outside and just sticking with it for months on end, like all of a sudden on the field got better, you know, opportunities started to come. And I don't know if it's like connected obviously, but I just noticed myself taking it day by day more and just finding you know, calmness in moments rather than just worrying about things and just staying present. And have you guys developed anything in game? Yeah, my biggest thing is if I ever make a mistake on the field, I immediately throw it away and I just try and- How? I know you say that, but I'm gonna try, to, because everyone's, it's so easy. No, That's for so sure. easy to say, everyone goes, oh, I just forget about it. But. No, I think, I think just knowing that there's so many more plays that are gonna happen throughout the game, that if you dwell on that, another bad mistake could happen. Yeah. So I think it's just literally trying to wash it away as quick mm -hmm. as you possibly can. And obviously that's hard to do because it could be a goal and they're celebrating and it's gonna sit and marinate a little yeah. longer, but Those are tough. yeah, it's not, it's, not, it's not fun when that happens. But um, yeah, I think literally just trying to get it out of your head and just like, all right, what's the next thing I can yeah. do? For me, it's just repeated self-affirmation. And the game that comes to mind is Orlando. Um, I remember we, we were at Orlando, we're up 2-1 and my pass inadvertently led to the goal, so it felt like I caused the goal. Yeah. And I remember just being there and being like, Tanny, like I, I used to have this really bad habit in um, bad moments. Yeah. Um, I would be so negative on myself. I'd be like, dude, you suck, like out loud <laughs> to myself. And I remember I had a conversation with my trainer back home, uh, Sylvester, and I told him about that. And his biggest thing is he works on the body, but he thinks the mind is more important than that. And if you can train your mind, it helps the body go a long way. And he's like, you can't. You can't put yourself in that mindset because then you just set yourself up for failure moving forward. So if I miss a chance, the one thing I always will say to myself is you're going to get another one. You're good. It happens. It happens. Hey, the big guys miss it. It happens. Hey, you were just watching Prem the other week. You saw somebody miss a big chance. It's okay. And I'll just try and tell that to myself as much as possible until I'm back in a good mindset. What happened in the Orlando game? So basically, no, no. So you made the bad pass. You talked to yourself. And then what happened? In the Orlando uh, got game? the assist for the winning goal. There so it is. the talking worked. <laughs> <laughs> I gave myself three strikes. So three passes where I'll just make one out of bounds, I'll miss the next one, and then I'll deflect one. And then my third one is I actually go, I developed this um, when I was 16 years old, it's happy place. I'll literally stop and I'll close my eyes and I'll take two seconds and I imagine myself in my quote unquote happy place, which was IMG Florida. And then my next movement, the next thing I do is the most simple action that I know will be 100% successful. 
And then my next part of this is what advice would you give to some of the younger players or to other people if they're in difficult moments? It's really important to have a person. It doesn't have to be anybody who's related to soccer whatsoever. Just being able to talk to somebody and who is unbiased in the sense that they love you and they're not, because sometimes you talk to a teammate, they're seeing you in training, they're seeing everything, so they, they'll have opinions. But having somebody who's completely unbiased, is completely away from the game and can just tell you like, hey, listen, regardless of what happens, and it's not, you always don't want to hear it. Yeah. You definitely don't always want to hear it, but yeah. you sometimes you need those people in your life, regardless of what happens, you're still amazing. Like yeah. you got to this level for a reason. You're at that level for a reason. And sometimes that simple reminder is what you need to be like, okay, I just need to reset, go back to square one and work your way back up. I think for anyone that's out there struggling, find something that like can help you with that, whether it's meditation, journaling, talking to someone. It all starts with just reaching out and trying to do something about it and recognizing like everyone deals with things. It's life. Yeah. Like life is hard and you know, it's not always gonna be easy days and it's not always gonna be great days. So I think just finding something that can give you that peace and really calm your mind down. But like from the sense of like soccer, if they're like struggling from that standpoint, it's bringing them down. Just keep playing. Just keep trying to have fun. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, opportunities will come and go and just always try and make the most of them. And just it's I think it's everyone that makes it professionally is just the will of never giving up yeah. and always believing in yourself. One thing that really helped me was find something else to look forward to, because if soccer is the only thing you look forward to and it's not going well, then it's just going to continue to spiral. But if there's something else that you can kind of remove yourself, whether meditating is also a really good one, um, reading books, listening to music, getting an instrument, whatever it is, just something that's not soccer, yeah. you know. Yeah. My whole life soccer's always been my hobby and I've always yeah. now that it's a that it's more quote unquote a job, I have to find other things to, to get myself away from there a little bit. There's just such like a weird stigma, like it's not supposed to be cool to talk about your feelings, but like as as we are we our job is here in front of people, so it's hard for us to hide. And there's some people who have done it longer, some people who can do it better, and some people who are learning that process. But it's been really cool to kind of talk to you guys and have yourselves be vulnerable because it's not easy. And I will, I will say that you're developing into <laughs> young gentlemen right in front of my eyes, but you're getting to the point now where you're, you're gonna now become a bridge. You know what I mean? You used to be the point of contact for older players. But now you're going to be the bridge for some of the guys who are coming up in the younger system that can look up to a homegrown. They can look up to a forward who's gone on loan and come back and had success to where then now you can speak from your own experiences and then provide that sort of insight to kind of make the next generation better, which is ultimately what we're trying to achieve. So kudos to you guys for doing that.